Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we are going to do an incline chest press without using a bench in a barn. We are answering a viewer's question on how to do incline chest press without a bench today. We will be stacking up slam balls or sandbags in order to accomplish this task. The first thing we're gonna use probably isn't necessary for most people. I'm just using it because I'm in a barn. This is an old chunk of padding out of the floor of a boxing gym, but you could use any yoga mat. The goal is just to keep you out of the dirt. If you're not in the dirt, then you don't need that step. The next thing we're gonna have is a corner, something to rest against, and I'm using a 70 pound slam ball from Living Fit and a 30 pound slam ball from Living Fit. We have our two slam balls in the corner stacked up. The goal is to get this slam ball in between the center of your scapula just so that you have something to rest your upper back against. Your neck is not going to be anything. You're going to have to maintain control of your head the entire time. Get yourself towards position. Put a dumbbell up on each leg. They can then generally kind of rest for a second. Get back, check your distance. Get your spine to about a 45 degree angle. Use the legs to get the weights up into position. Press all the way up, weights come all the way down, all the way up, all the way down, all the way up, all the way down. Do as many reps as you need to. The interesting thing here is that you should be maintaining control of your head so you don't end up slamming your skull into a sharp point on the wall. When you're done, set the bells back down, sit all the way up, get your bells back down to the ground. This is a simple fix to allow people to do incline chest press in a bunch of different environments. The good thing about this is, is that because your knees are towards your chest, it's really hard to overly arch your back. A lot of times when people are on benches, they'll drop their legs down really far and they'll open their chest up a lot. I like this ground version because it's easy to maintain core control and try to drive your rib cage down to engage your core with every rep. Slam balls tend to be pretty expensive, so people might not have access to those. Sandbags, on the other hand, are cheap. This is a 200 pound sandbag from Bells of Steel, and this is a 150 pound sandbag from Bells of Steel. These will function much the same way. You might just have to adjust them a little bit to get to the point where you can put your back on there comfortably. Sit down, check the angle. Good, my head's not gonna hit anything. My spine is about at a 45 degree angle. My scaps can move on the bags. Pick up weight onto each leg. Get back to position. Weights up. Press. And when you're done, sit up, set the weights all the way down. Incline chest press is a really good exercise if you need to look good in short order. Kettlebells don't really effectively do the incline chest press angle. Kettlebells are awesome at overhead and they are great for Turkish get-ups. But in order for people to get a more modern aesthetic, oftentimes many of the clients that I have worked with in the past need to both be highly functional and look good. You would spend about 90% of your time working on your kettlebells, your heavy club swinging, your mace swinging, your sandbag or slam ball lifting so that people's base movement patterns are really good. Then at the end of training, you could do something like this almost anywhere and you could do five sets to failure for that incline chest press. That would allow people to get all the functional training that they really need, the core control, the rotation stabilization, the cardio integration, and then look good by using just some intermediate weights and training towards failure in this generally stable and mostly safe position. When we train with kettlebells or clubs, we tend not to train to failure because if you train to failure with those implements, your grip fails and then a big chunk of iron flies out away from you in some random direction. With something like this, you can train to failure. So this is done at the end of training. After you've done all the dangerous stuff where you could drop something on your face 
or you could lose a weight, that's your real athletic development. Then at the end, you can do this stable position and you can train to failure for a few sets so that you can get that modern aesthetic appeal in a short period of time. The easiest way to do that is to set a timer for three minutes. Have it repeat five times. When the bell goes off, do a set. You could press for 30 seconds to a minute, depending on what weights you have available to you, and then you'll get two and a half to two minute break. Do five sets and then move into your cool down. This is a cheap, easy idea to allow people to do a small amount of physique training or pretty training at the end of their normal athletic training session where they're focusing on athletic skills, speed, power, rotation, stabilization, and movement patterns. And this just gets tacked on to the end as a pretty workout finisher.